When your engine has given you this length of service, it's time to give a little back. At 1400 hours of engine service, you need to do both the 700 and 1400 hour maintenance jobs. You should have already seen the videotape program on the 700 hour maintenance, so let's get a brief review before we go on to the 1400 hour job. Here's what we'll be doing. First is to change the governor oil. Next is to clean the fuel strainers and change the fuel filters. Another need is to check the engine coolant inhibitor concentration. Last is checking the working order of the crankcase pressure detector. An easy job. All right, let's get on to the 1400 hour maintenance. We'll see what we need to do, then take a closer look at how to do it. First is to change all lube oil filters and clean the oil strainers. Then clean and check the turbocharger and soak back filter check valves. There are also soak back filter relief and bypass valves that must be cleaned and checked. Change the engine air filters. On top of the oil separator is an ejector tube. You'll need to clean it. The last thing, if the temperature is running a little high, you should clean the heat exchanger, but even if it's not, you'll need to check the heat exchanger zinc anodes. That's it in a nutshell. Now for a closer look, step by step. The engine lube oil filter is a full flow type that has a circular tank containing filter elements mounted on standpipes. The circular tank has two compartments. The filters fit up against a false bottom. The unfiltered oil comes into this large area and is taken into the filter elements. After going through the element, the oil continues into the standpipe that supports the filter element. Through this pipe, the oil goes into the false bottom or second compartment to be discharged to the oil cooler. The elements seal at the bottom so the oil has no other way to get through other than through the filter medium. If for some reason you've got real cold oil or dirty filters, the filter will be bypassed if the pressure is more than 40 PSI. Anytime you see a pressure of more than 25 PSI at rated engine RPM, you should change the elements. These elements cannot be cleaned, they must be changed. You can apply a 0 to 50 PSI pressure gauge to the gauge connection on the filter tank cover to determine the tank oil pressure. To actually change the filter elements, open the filter drain valve in the lube oil strainer housing and drain all the oil. When it's empty, carefully open the filter cover so that the remaining oil will drain into the trough. Then you can pull off the filter elements. Now wipe out the housing. Get all the sludge and foreign material. You're now ready to install new filters. Be sure they're equivalent to original equipment. Check the center tube seats to be sure there's no dirt or anything to prevent proper seating of the elements. On the back of these, you have a plate that supports all seven of these filters. If you install it incorrectly, the weight of the plate will push every one of the filters down, which will make a leakage around this rubber gasket right here. With that done, you're ready to check the condition of the cover gasket. Use a new one if you have any doubts. A light film of petroleum grease helps hold the gasket in place. Close the cover and tighten the bolts. Then close off the filter drain valve. All right, around to the turbocharger oil filter. It's on the housing for the camshaft drive on the right bank. The reason the filter is there is to refilter the oil before it goes into the turbocharger and provide additional protection for the high-speed bearings. Oil comes into the filter through a manifold, is filtered, then goes to the upper idler gear stub shaft and into the turbocharger. Of course, you can change the filter anytime before your 1400 hour maintenance if you think it needs it, but at this point it must be changed. Always use filters and parts, no matter where they are, that are equivalent in quality to original equipment. Okay, 
To remove the filter, loosen those two nuts holding the container to the upper housing until you can grab the two handles and take off the container. Get the filter element and throw it away. Thoroughly clean the element container and stick in a new filter and seal. With that done, fill it up with fresh clean engine oil and reinstall the container on the upper housing. Get the bolts snug but not too tight because you might damage the seal. Filtering the oil is important, but so is proper temperature. Anytime your engine is shut down, it must have oil circulating at the right temperature for when you start it up. The immersion heater does this job. It has a circulating pump, motor, and an auxiliary filter, which replaces the standard soapback filter. The pump and motor are mounted down on the skid, and the filter is mounted on the accessory rack next to the control cabinet. The immersion heater keeps the engine in a constant state of readiness for startup by circulating warm water and thereby heating the oil in the oil cooler. This pump draws oil from the oil pan and sends it up through the auxiliary turbocharger oil filter and onto the turbo bearing area. It also sends some oil through a 30 psi check valve to the main lube oil filter, the oil cooler, and back to the oil pan through the strainer housing. The auxiliary turbocharger oil filter should also be changed now. Like other filters, it can be changed any time you feel there's a need to do so. To do it, loosen the two flange nuts that hold the cover to the filter housing. Grab the handle and turn the cover counterclockwise until the holding ears are disengaged and drain the oil. The pleated filter element is paper and disposable, so throw it away and get a new one. Clean the housing real well and put the drain plug back in. Now comes the new filter and some clean engine oil. You also need to put a new O-ring seal on the cover. Put the cover back on, but be careful not to tighten it down too hard because the seal could be damaged. You'll have to check it for leaks after everything's fired up. Located in the auxiliary turbocharger filter system is a lube oil Y strainer. It should be cleaned at the specified intervals or more often if needed. Clean it in a petroleum solvent and blow it dry before reinstalling it. Here in the turbocharger filter head, there are two check valves. One, to prevent soak back lube oil from going into the turbocharger filter during soak back pump operation. The other one does just the opposite and prevents oil in the turbocharger filter from entering the soak back system when the engine is running. These check valves should be removed and cleaned, then inspected. Replace them if you see damage or have any doubts. Take care when you do reinstall them. If you detect oil coming from the camshaft bearings with the engine shut down and the soak back pump running, then you have a clear sign that the check valve in the filter head is jammed open or installed backwards. Now, remove, clean, and inspect the 30 psi check valve in the auxiliary turbocharger filter system. Replace or reinstall it as needed. This is the lube oil strainer housing that's being put on a rebuilt engine. It's a cast aluminum box and fits here on the right front side of the engine. There are two strainers for the main lube oil pump and one strainer screen for the scavenging oil pump. There's a separate in and out for each system. All strainers need to be cleaned during the 1400 hour task operation and whenever you change the oil in your EMD. Here's how to get at your strainers. We'll start with the two main lube oil strainers. Take off this large square cover and then open the housing drain valve with a lift and turn motion. The oil will drain back into the oil pan. When the lube oil is drained, take off the hand wheel and strainer hold down crab. Then take out the strainers. While you're at it, 
let's get the scavenger strainer too. There are three hold down nuts. With those off, you can lift the metal plate out and then remove the scavenging strainer. Let it drain, just like the main lube oil filter, and clean it up the same way. It's a good idea to drain and clean them all at the same time. When the draining is complete, turn them upside down, remove the nut that's on the stud, and slide out the strainer element. Use a petroleum solvent to clean the strainer elements and the metal cylinders. Then blow them dry with compressed air. There's a couple more things to do before you seal them back up. First, after they're dry, wipe both sections of the strainer housings with a clean, dry, lint-free rag. You don't want any little particles clogging up a small oil line somewhere. Now, take off the seals under the top of the strainers and put on new ones. Check the sealing surfaces on the housing to make sure there aren't any nicks or scratches. When all that is back in the housing with new seals, insert the two main loop pump strainers along with the hold down crab and hand wheel. As you tighten down the hand wheel, be sure the strainers aren't cocked and that they are well seated. Also, the scavenging pump strainer should be replaced. With that done, you can close off the strainer housing drain valve and refill the housing with clean engine lube oil. When the oil is refilled, put on the square housing cover. Besides the seal rings under the strainer covers, there is a seal of oil under pressure while the engine is running. If the seal rings aren't seated well, or if they're damaged, this pressurized oil will leak out. To check this, the engine should be at idle speed. Loosen the hand wheel until the seal ring of the strainer farthest from the engine is just free of the housing. Oil should leak out around the strainer flange. If not, shut down the engine. Then, clean and inspect the oil supply passages and seals. If any air gets into the system here, it'll be discharged with the lube oil and may cause some damage, even though normal oil pressure is indicated on the gauge. Let's move up to the air intake filters. We'll look first at turbocharged models. The assembly consists of a welded steel housing containing disposable filter elements of either bag type fiberglass or rectangular pleated type paper. Like all filters on your EMD, use only original equipment or equivalent quality for replacements. When putting these air filters back in, make sure they're seated correctly so that you get a good seal. If they aren't in there right, air could leak past the filters rather than through them, and one of the things that that turbocharger doesn't need is unfiltered air. The filter assembly is equipped with a vacuum switch that senses the difference between ambient pressure and pressure at the turbo compressor inlet. When the switch trips, the alarm system activates to indicate a clogged filter. That switch is equipped with a shielded test button that may be pressed with a pencil or some thin object to test the warning light indicator. Always press the reset lever on the vacuum switch after pressing the test button. Another indication that says you need to replace the filter element is when a manometer reading gives a 6 inch to 8 inch water column pressure drop. If you don't have a U-tube manometer, you should install one. Blower engines use panel type oil bath air filters. Air comes in through the front cover of the filter and is deflected two different directions. Some air goes down into the filter oil supply. The air picks up oil and is then rooted upward by a baffle plate. The oil laden air goes through the filter medium and leaves the oil on the filter before going into the blower. The rest of the air goes through this oil wetted medium and deposits dirt particles on the filter before entering the blower. So the dirt gets trapped in the filter and the constant flow of oil droplets drips down through the medium and therefore provides a self-cleaning action. 
There's a sight glass on the lower front portion of the filter. The level is checked after the engine has been shut down for about a half an hour to let the oil on the medium drain to the filter sump. 1400 hours is when we drain this oil. Remove the plug at the bottom of the oil sump. Allow time for all the oil and sludge to drain thoroughly. Then replace the plug and refill it with the recommended lube oil. The level should be at the center of the sight glass. Now, over to the ejector tube. It's in the exhaust stack, mounted on top of the oil separator. The principle on which it works is air under pressure draws engine oil vapors through the separator screen. Well, here, let's let Bob McCaig, chief engineer on the MSV Theris, tell us about it. What we did on the oil separator, the theory behind it, in the crankcase, oil vapors are formed in the engine, and the separator acts as a breather for the engine. Now, inside this separator assembly is an eductor tube, which causes a vacuum and draws oil vapors in through the screen, filter screen assembly. And what we did was to remove this assembly, take out the filter screen and clean it in a petroleum based solvent and then check the adductor tube, make sure there are no blockages etc. And then fit the complete assembly back in position on the engine using new joints where applicable. Thanks, Bob. Let's go through that disassembly again real quickly. Disconnect the airline and remove the bolts at the base of the ejector assembly. Then disconnect it from the exhaust stack and carefully remove it. You don't want any particles to get down into the vapor intake area or into the exhaust stack. Once the ejector assembly has been removed, you need to clean out all of the carbon deposits in the ejector tube. Here it's a good idea to remove the tube and clean it, but on some of the older turbochargers, the tube is welded into the exhaust stack, so you need to be very careful to scrape all of that carbon out of the tube, because if any falls into the turbocharger, it could cause some damage. Over to the heat exchanger. You probably already know that it consists of cooler tubes through which the raw water flows from one end to the other and back. Engine water flows around these tubes to lose some of its heat, then goes back into the engine. Located in the headers at each end are zinc electrodes. They prevent electrolytic action on the tubes, which would cause corrosion inside those tubes, and that would mean a hot engine. Any deterioration of these zinc electrodes means electrolytic action caused by externally grounded electric currents. This problem has to be corrected to avoid serious damage. If the electrodes are 50% or more deteriorated, replace them and find the cause. To clean the heat exchanger, remove both header covers and use a pressure stream of water on the inside and outside of the tubes. Passing a round wire brush through the tubes will be the most effective way to clean them. That's all the 1400 hour tasks. Let's list them one more time before we roll the credits. First the 700 hour checks and then the 1400 hour checks. You'll change the oil in the governor, clean the fuel strainers and change the fuel filters, check the engine coolant inhibitor concentration, Check the working order of the crankcase pressure detector, change the lube oil filters, and clean the oil strainers. Then clean and check the turbocharger and soak back filter check valves. There are also soak back filter relief and bypass valves that must be cleaned and checked. Change the engine air filters. On top of the oil separator is an ejector tube. You'll need to clean it. The last thing, if the temperature is running a little high, you should clean the heat exchanger, but even if it's not, you'll need to check the heat exchanger zinc anodes.